This is Dr. Sahar from Dentavest, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBDA.NAFK exam. Today, I have taken a quick topic of how to diagnose the dental caries. Let us talk about it. First of all, when we talk about the diagnosis of dental caries, dental caries are defined as preventable, chronic and biofilm mediated disease, modulated by diet. These multifactorial and oral disease is caused let us see the definition of dental caries first. So, dental caries is defined as a preventable chronic and biofilm mediated disease modulated by diet. These multifactorial and oral diseases caused primarily by imbalance of the oral flora that is biofilm. It has a bacteria due to presence of fermentable dietary carbohydrates on the tooth surface over time. Now, let us talk about the diagnosis. The ideal diagnostic test that we do it should be sensitive and specific. Specificity means ability of the test to clearly differentiate one disease from another. Let us see what are the various diagnostic tools we can use for diagnostic of caries. We have visual, tactile, use of floss, separators, radiography examination like your conventional radiography, like your periapicals, bite wing, panos, then we have zero radiography, OPG. Commonly used method for visual for detecting the carious lesion is a visual examination. It's an easy technique. So visual examination, you look for the cavitation, you look for the surface roughness, chalkiness around the pit and fissure, opacification, and discoloration. First, the teeth which are examined, they are dry it with the compressed air and illuminated under adequate light source. So examination can take up to 10 minutes. But problem with this method is that discoloration of pit and fissure may be a universal finding in a normal healthy adult teeth which may be mistaken for the presence of caries. The visual screening system or scoring system by ICDAS that stands for International Caries Detection and Assessment, we see ICDAS uses a two-stage process to record the status of the carious lesion. The first coding is based on the severity and the second coding is based on the restorative status of the tooth. We can see in ICDS scoring criteria, zero is no or slight changes in enamel translucency after five seconds of air drying. While the one stands for first visual changes in enamel, two code stands for distinct visual changes in enamel, three is localized enamel breakdown in opaque enamel, four is underlying dark shadow from the dentine, five is distinct cavity with visible dentine, and six is extensive distinct cavity with visible dentine involvement more than half of the surface. You can see how we are categorizing different scores here. This is score 1, score 2, score 3, score 4, score 5. You can see and score 6 we can see a visual a big cavity defect here. The disadvantage of the scoring method is depth of the caries, right? It is not determining that and we know discoloration of the pits and healthy tooth can be diagnosed as caries. Now we talk about the tactile examinations. Tactile examination include examination of roughness or softness of the tooth surface with the sharp explorer. Now you have to remember the tip of the exposure diameter should be 200 micrometer or less. So explorer can be used to explore the pits and fissure. It can be used to check for a catch or binding of the explorer. However, you have to use explorer very judiciously very wisely why because if you are using explorer with the excessive tactile pressure it can cause actual cavitation which was not there before use of sharp explorer just up to the catch finding is okay but if you want to use that explorer after the catch finding and trying to dig it deeper no it is not recommended that's why cpitn recommends you to assess the surface roughness with the explorer having 0.5 millimeter sphere at the tip. All the tactile examination definitely is economical and there is no radiation exposure in them. Also the visual examination uh, can be done, a visual tactile examination can be done by using a dental floss. Interproximally, of course, we have to take the bite wing radiographs, but clinically you can also use to start with like a dental floss to detect the dental caries. After your tooth has been cleaned, Floss is inserted through the contact area and dragged occlusally against one proximal surface. If it shreds, there is roughness, the caries is present, but of course, uh, overhanging proximal restorations can also create the same features. So, 
so it is not a reliable test now use of two separators right two separator of course they are very commonly used for detecting the interproximal caries or the orthodontic separators it requires second visit after a period of 3 to 7 days so you are putting the separator you are leaving them and then you can see the tooth has separated and then you can easily see interproximally but it's a long process required second visit discomfort to the patient you are leaving the uh, separator there for 7 days not very preferred we go for radiographic examination which includes the conventional radiography like taking a periapical bite wing for the proximal zero radiography and also the opg or dental panel but definitely periapicals are the best here the intraoral periapical radiograph or iopa they are mainly used for detecting the changes around the roots and in between the teeth it can be used for minor surgical procedures too advantages of course in iopa you have lesser radiation exposure lower cost now we see at the bite wings now the so bite wing are used to detect incipient lesions at the contact point and these radiographs show approximately 8 teeth in one radiograph cervical margin of the restoration you can also look at the alveolar crest height by using the radiograph so this is a horizontal bite wing vertical bite wing helps in better detecting the alveolar bone loss and also the size of pulp chamber so bite wings are definitely very good for detecting the interproximal caries now we can see opg OPG, of course, the magnification is there, the resolution is not as sharp as compared to periapical or bite wing, but you can see all the teeth together in one radiograph, detecting both the anterior and posterior teeth. But disadvantage, as I told you, it is not as sharp. And also in uh, PANO, the chances of proximal overlaps are also very high. So it's difficult to detect interproximal caries. Overall, sharpness and clarity is lesser, less in OPG as compared to periapicals. Now we talk about zero radiography. Zero radiography is an advanced technique. It's a highly accurate electrostatic imaging technique. In this technique, image is recorded at the aluminum plate coated with a layer of selenium particle. So this will form a latent image and is converted into positive image once you develop it. So radiography, zero radiography is definitely very sensitive. It's twice as sensitive as conventional D-spectrum. The phenomenon of edge enhancement is also possible with zero radiography. Zero radiography advantages is edge enhancement. It helps in differentiating area of different margins or caries. It's economical and overall it has less radiation exposure. But the disadvantage is that the electric charge over the film many times causes discomfort to the patient. And development may take up to 15 minutes. Another method for case detection is the dye penetration method. Dyes should fulfill the following criteria. So when you're using a dye for caries detection, it should be safe for intraoral use. It should stain only the area that you need to stain. It should be easily removed and should not lead to permanent staining. The dyes we use is like Procyon. We stain the enamel lesion, but staining can become irreversible because the dye can react with nitrogen and hydroxyl groups of enamel. Calcine. Dye makes a complex with a calcium, but it also remains bound to the enamel. Overall, the dye penetration method are not as successful so histopathologically carious dentine is divided into two layers the outer inner layer the outer layer is a layer of decalcification which is a soft and cannot be remineralized or inner decalcified layer which is hard and can be remineralized so the dyes that you're using for examination of dentinal caries are mainly used to differentiate these two layers you have 0.5 percent basic fusion in propylene glycol that is considered to be successful though basic fusion dye was considered to be carcinogenic and is replaced by acid red methylene blue. Methylene blue is also slightly toxic, so it's acid red that is mainly preferred. The newer caries detection technology that we are using have emerged and show promising results for the clinical detection and diagnosis of caries lesion. And these devices may have the potential to replace the tactile portion of caries detection where explorers are used to try to estimate the depth of caries lesion into pit and fissure. And we know that may not be very good method. So we have following newer advanced methods like you have LIF. LIF stands for laser induced fluorescence. So Diagnodon device uses laser fluorescence technology with the intention of detecting and measuring bacterial products and changes in the tooth structure in the caries lesion. It requires clean, dry occlusal surface. So this device is more sensitive than traditional diagnostic methods we have, but it has increased likelihood of false positive diagnosis. That means caries which is not present, it can be shown as present here. So it is limited usefulness as a principal diagnostic method. Another one we have is light induced fluorescence like CAMEX, SPECTRA, caries detection 8. 
So this system claims to detect the carrier lesion by measuring light induced fluorescence. Space lights LED project high energy violet or blue light onto the two surface. And light of this wavelength supposedly stimulates porphyrins to appear distinctly red, where healthy enamel fluorescence to appear green. Data captured by the spectra system are analyzed by imaging the software, which highlights the lesion in a different color ranges and defines the potential case activity on a scale of 0 to 5. Then we have the last one that is alternating current impedance spectroscopy. The alternating current impedance spectroscopy is CARIS Pro. So the last one we have is alternating current impedance spectroscopy, also called as ACIST. Carey Scan Pro is a device for the detection and monitoring of the caries by the application analysis of ACIST technology. The Carey Scan Pro claims to enable the clinician to evaluate the demineralized tooth structure using ACIST by providing information about the tissue being healthy in the early stages of demineralization or already significantly decayed.